This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Bloomberg reports that the honeymoon for Tesla in China may be over. Tesla is being attacked in the state-run media about problems with brakes and batteries catching on fire. Several weeks ago, Teslas were banned from military and government installations in China. This week, a branch of the Communist Party said Tesla should respect Chinese consumers and comply with local laws and regulations. Another branch of the party said Tesla was not making an effort to find the cause of its problems. And yesterday, a video went viral of a customer jumping on top of a Tesla on display at the Shanghai Auto Show this week, denouncing the company. She was detained by the police, and Tesla says she's widely known for protesting about the brake issue on its cars. But we should note, all this comes at a time when the government-supported Chinese automakers are coming out with their own EVs that compete with Tesla. And despite the government complaints, Chinese consumers are buying up Teslas at record rates. By 2030, BMW is aiming for all electric vehicles to account for at least 50% of its global sales. To help with that transition, the automaker will launch what it calls a new class of vehicles by the middle of the decade. It hasn't revealed many details about them, but it did say they will have similar range and manufacturing costs as its internal combustion engine models. To achieve that, BMW will increase the energy density of the battery cells while reducing the amount of high-cost materials used in the batteries. And by the end of the decade, the company says it will be equipping its EVs with solid-state batteries, which it says are more cost-effective, safe, powerful, and recyclable. BMW will demonstrate that technology in a prototype before 2025. And be sure to join us for this week's AutoLine After Hours. The topic will be all about sustainable materials because our special guest is Deborah Maluski, who's in charge of sustainability at Ford. So join us this Thursday for a deep dive into the benefits of using more environmentally friendly materials in vehicles. Automated and autonomous driving are important developments that help make the traffic of the future safer, more efficient, and more comfortable. We are ZF. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Israeli startup REE Automotive is seeing a lot of interest for its modular EV skateboard platform. Last year, it partnered with Mahindra to develop commercial vehicles based on the architecture. Last week, it signed a deal with Magna to have the supplier help it manufacture and bring that platform to market. And now it's collaborating with self-driving startup Navia to develop a level four autonomous system using its platform and Navia's AV technology. For those of you not familiar with REE's platform, it houses the battery in the floor while the powertrain, suspension, braking, and steering components are all integrated into the wheel arches at the corners. It's designed for commercial applications and can range in size from a small urban delivery vehicle to a large van. I would guess you probably know that AV companies test their vehicles virtually so they can throw scenarios at it that they might not experience often in the real world. But did you know in some cases, those virtual worlds are created using the same software that's used to develop video games. And that's the case at Porsche. Turns out the same game engines that are able to make lifelike reflections, textures, and intense battles are also good for making virtual worlds to test advanced driver assistance systems. And not only that, Porsche says it will use the tech to allow new customers to virtually sit in the car they just ordered long before it rolls off the assembly line. While automakers are making the headlines at the Shanghai Auto Show, suppliers are making some news of their own. ZF introduced a new supercomputer that it says is ideal for a range of different functions, including autonomous cars, all the way up to level five. 
called Pro AI. It's smaller, faster, and uses less energy than before. It's powered by a GPU, but ZF designed it so automakers can use GPUs from different chip makers. And depending on the application, it can use passive cooling, air cooling, or liquid cooling. It's quite compact, only 24 by 14 by 5 centimeters, or about 9 by 5 by 2 inches. And it can be scaled up to 1,000 trillion operations per second. It goes into production in 2024. And Schaeffler is positioning itself to be a major supplier of EV and fuel cell components in China. It has a range of electric motors ranging from 20 to 300 kilowatts of power in hybrids and BEVs that are on display in Shanghai. It's also displaying this intriguing concept of what it calls intelligent corner modules. They contain the tire, wheel, hub motor, brakes, steering and suspension components into one corner unit. Sounds very similar to what REE Automotive is doing. And that would greatly improve assembly time for an automaker. Schaeffler also showed off its fuel cell stack, which is the core of a fuel cell system. While China is a leader in battery electric cars, it's also pushing heavily for the development of fuel cells. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Maserati is expanding its hybrid lineup with a version of the Levante that debuted at the Shanghai Auto Show. It uses the exact same setup as the Ghibli Hybrid, which combines a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder engine with a 48-volt starter generator, an additional electric supercharger, and a small battery pack. The setup combines for a total of 330 horsepower, and thanks to standard all-wheel drive, the Levante Hybrid will do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in under 6 seconds. Maserati also says it's lighter than V6 versions and better balanced with the battery mounted in the rear of the vehicle. While styling is the same, like most hybrids, it features blue accents in and around the vehicle to signify this isn't your typical gas burner. No word on price or launch date just yet for the Levante Hybrid. In other EV news, Mercedes is improving the electric range of its articulated version of its Citro bus. It's doing that with a second-generation lithium-ion battery, which has more capacity than previous batteries. The old setup features 243 kilowatt-hours of battery capacity, while the new one has 10 battery packs that combine for 330 kilowatt-hours of battery capacity. Mercedes would only say that range increases considerably. But if there was any concern that the battery would run out, there's also a pantograph mounted on the roof that collects current from overhead power lines at bus stops. And here's an interesting vehicle Ford revealed in China called the EVOS. What makes this vehicle unique is that it's the first Ford developed by a mostly China-based team. It appears to be based on the Escape slash Focus platform and mixes styling of a sedan and SUV. We'd also say that you could have probably replaced the Ford logos with ones from Polestar and nobody would have said a word. The interior is dominated by a large display that merges several screens under one piece of glass. All the usual stuff is displayed and passengers are also able to watch videos and movies on their side of the car. And thanks to the same electrical system as the Mustang Mach-E, that big screen will always be up to date. Ford didn't say anything about the powertrain, but we're guessing it's mostly ICE-based. And we say that because the EVOS will be produced by Chang'an Ford and sold and serviced through Ford's distribution network. If you remember from last week, Ford has set up a BEV division in China that will do its own R&D manufacturing and sales of electric vehicles. But that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching. 
and we'll be right back here again tomorrow. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. And by ZF. ZF, driving intelligence for software-defined vehicles and transforming next-generation mobility.